So, my name is Andre, and um, I'm going to talk about Jenkins and my experience with that. Uh, and yeah, I have, I have a lot of complaints about that, and I guess many other people also have some complaints about Jenkins. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's dominating the, the industry, it's like so de facto standard. Uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately at the same time, so it's, it's a good tool, I'm not, not bashing it that much. Okay, uh, just a few words about me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm a developer, I'm a DevOps guy sometimes, I'm a trainer, speaker, organizing community conferences, do a lot of stuff, but also I'm using Jenkins a lot. Uh, so uh, let's start. Just a bit of history lesson first. Uh, as you probably know, Jenkins is, is not it's not, it's not the original name, actually it started as, as Hudson project uh, back in the days, like in 2004, by, by a guy called Kasuki Kawaguchi. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Uh, the first release was done in 2005, uh, and uh, at that time Kasuki was working in, in Sun. Uh, and uh, actually Hudson was, at, at that point in time, was a very good you know, piece of software that uh, compared to other solutions on the market was Pretty easy to start, pretty easy to extend, pretty easy to use. And that's why I guess it got such a big popularity. In 2010, Sun was acquired by Oracle. A lot of discussions, negotiations, licensing stuff. Uh, of course, Kasuki was not really happy about working in Oracle because well, his, the, the, his baby, his uh, product, Hudson, was kind of abused there a bit because it's licensing against, uh, again. And uh, in 2010, uh, majority of Hudson community votes for making a fork out of Hudson and to change the name. And the name, as you can guess, is Jenkins. So initial release is 2nd of February 2011. Uh, and uh, the thing is that Hudson still remains under Oracle. I think they still kind of support it, but if we go into and see how many downloads Hudson has versus how many downloads Jenkins has, uh, yeah, there's like a fly and an elephant. Uh, and around 2010, 2011, a company called Calbis is formed, and Kasuhi is, is working there as a, as a CTO, I think, or one of the chief architects of, of the platform. He's, he's working on the product, he's uh, going, going around the, the world and advertising that, and Calbis is uh, basically created around Jenkins, as, and they try to provide it as a service, they provide support, they provide they provided at some point, some time ago, a cloud uh, offering uh, for Jenkins. I'm not sure if they do that still, May, maybe not. I uh, have to ver verify that later on, but uh, yeah, the cloud base is the company that is supporting Jenkins at the moment. Uh, and another thing I would like you know to 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 talk to, to notice is that you know word pipeline is, is something that it's it, it's like it's, it's similar to word microservice. Uh, it was known before. We did that before. We just called it differently. We called it saw. We we, we called it with some different aspects and some different focus. In Jenkins, we, we could implement some sort of pipelines before we actually called them pipelines. So now everything that is like a background job, a crown job that is executed in CI environment is called a pipeline because it's cool. So it's not it's not cool to call them just jobs anymore. Uh, we call them pipelines and. Uh, Kind of similar things we could implement it in Jenkins before uh, before recent upgrades in, in, in Jenkins and Jenkins file uh, appeared. So uh, of course you know that you can configure a lot of different steps inside your freestyle jobs. You can and uh, the more plugins you have, the longer is the list of these uh, things. So this already allows you to create some sort of pipelines, like s single threaded uh, pipelines, and uh, this is, is going to work fine. Also you have some post build actions where you allow, allow you to pu publish stuff onto. Um, yeah, uh, like reports and email notifications, Slack notifications, uh, whatnot. All of that existed in Jenkins since almost day one, and uh, it's still there, and we can still use it to create Jenkins pipelines, uh, Jen Jenkins jobs, I would say, Jenkins jobs. Because pipeline, again, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a new term, but essentially it's uh, pretty much the same thing, uh, with, with some additional functionality on top of that, with some better integration with branches and uh, better integration with UI, but we're going to talk about that a bit later. So uh, the step definitions, uh, uh, oh, I, as you probably know, this is XML file lying in Jenkins' uh, home directory, which defines which, which are the steps. And of course, people more and more st stop liking XML for some reason. Uh, they prefer different languages, and uh, luckily there is a language that allows us to define uh, the description of, the job, of, of, of a job uh, using Groovy. And because we're in Groovy Conference, that's, that's the, most, uh, the, the best thing we can, we, can, we can get. So job DSL exists there since, I think, 2000, 
2008, 2009, uh, and it actually it was actually quite quite a good effort from from the community to uh, pretty much take most of the plugins that existed inside uh, Jen Jenkins ecosystem and have a special DSL entry inside 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 the job DSL uh, to allow to configure that particular plugin. So in this particular case, we, there's a Maven uh, staff that is part of DSL and is configuring Maven plugin. There's also one for Gradle. There's also one for pretty much any plugin. We have a DSL entry, and it's actually very well documented as well. Uh, and uh, the way, uh, way, the way I use job DSL quite a lot uh, is uh, with, the, with, the, with the help of uh, Jenkins Gradle plugin, which allows me to define, to codify uh, Jenkins configuration with the help of uh, uh, Gradle script, basically. So I use this uh, Terry folder with Jenkins plugin, uh, which is using job DSL and, and, and under the hood, uh, which allows me to codify, to do Jenkins as code, uh, put it into version control, and then uh, use Gradle to uh, populate Jenkins instances with, with, with the jobs. So I'm not going into the UI and uh, configuring Jenkins anymore. I'm actually using uh, Gradle plugin and JobDSL to actually configure that. And that's how you, and of course, because again, it's groovy. It's, we were inside Gradle script, we were inside uh, using uh, groovy code there and groovy DSL. We can do a lot of magic there. So we can write templates, we can write loops, we can write um, uh, a lot of stuff that otherwise would, be, would require some manual actions. Uh, and uh, this is pretty handy because this allows me to, you know, have job templates or even a set of uh, job templates that would contribute to a pipeline, would contribute to uh, an execution flow of uh, complex uh, setup, uh, which otherwise I would have to go, you know, and configure in the UI, which is very manual and uh, unpleasant task, I would say. So, uh, another thing that Jenkins introduced few years ago, uh, you know, because, you know, people were starting to build uh, more complex uh, interactions between different jobs. And of course, each job could have been what uh, was, de was defined as, an, as, as a single uh, responsibility unit, like on building or deploying or uh, running acceptance tests against test environment, against production environment. And uh, there was an idea in the community that we need to try to you know, combine that all together, so different jobs into, into, into a flow. And from there, the build flow plugin was born, and there was another, another DSL on top of the, uh, on top of uh, uh, Jenkins functionality that allows us to call different jobs uh, uh, sequentially or in parallel and do some meta job configuration or in, in, in inter job communication uh, uh, for, 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 for a pipeline. So, this was actually what would, we would call a real pipeline because we have uniting several jobs together and uh, showing the results. Uh, and yeah, the, 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 the most important part here is I would say there was an ability to run the jobs in parallel, to pass parameters between jobs, and we could describe it inside the, inside the same uh, DSL script. Uh, and this was the, the first, the first uh, uh, sign of, uh, the, this was the first version basically of Jenkins pipelines, uh, Jen Jen Jenkins file, uh, and now this plugin is deprecated uh, in favor of uh, the pipeline plugin. And that's how it it looked for build flow plugin, for visualization of build flow plugin back in the days. I mean, you still can actually download that plugin, you still can use it, and I know there are several organizations that have still have this views of how they deploy and move the code from, from one stage to another. They still use these visualizations, and, that's still, still, and it still works fine, actually. Uh, uh, and there are just some examples of that, so we, uh, we have visualizations of stages. Uh, and yeah, another thing that I really liked about, well, I still like it, I still use it for, for, for freestyle jobs. Uh, again, because it's, uh, it's groovy, we, we, we could, uh, and because, you know, for, for logging and for, for visualization and communication purposes, a groovy post build plugin can integrate additional information to each of the jobs, uh, to, 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 the, to the build numbers and to, 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 to the builds, uh, add information like the, the some, some warnings, some, some icons, some, um, um, uh, so some additional like versioning number or the environment you deploy to. So I, I was using it quite extensively before before um, uh, be, before Jenkins two came out basically, uh, and I, I mean and it still still it still works. It's, uh, all, all, all those plugins like Groovy Post Build to Build Flow, uh, Job DSL still still available, still work uh, even with Jenkins two. Uh, 
but uh, there is something happening uh, behind the scenes as well, or not, 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 not even behind the scenes, it's actually quite, 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 quite visible at the moment, that uh, Jenkins or Qualby is actually trying to, to redo uh, the whole ecosystem, actually. And, they, uh, and, and that's why they, in, in, in the beginning of 2016, I think, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe even even in the end of the 2015, they, they introduced this new concept, like pipeline pipeline as code, which was basing itself on uh, the build flow plugin. The DSL was coming, uh, was starting as, as the first version from from build flow plugin, uh, and uh, basically you can allow now it allows you to define a Jenkins file you know, where you describe uh, the actual pipeline. So the whole pipeline is codified in one one single file, uh, and uh, you can you, you can. Bound, you can bind your uh, code execution, your build execution to a single node, uh, and that, or to, to several nodes. So, so you, you can use node notion to, to say if you want to run your build in parallel, you can put them on different nodes and different agents and run them run, run them in that way. Uh, and then you define build stages, and inside each build stage, you define the, what contributes to the code. Uh, and that, that that actually is is cool, uh, apart from the fact that uh, they're changing it from time to time. So now now they extended the, the Jenkins file uh, uh, definition that you actually have to define a pipeline as the root element. Uh, this one will still work, uh, will work fine, but now that you have to specify uh, use pipeline and engine. So this is this is something they did recently, maybe a couple of months ago, and then inside the stages you basically put the stage definitions again. Uh, uh, and that's how it look. It, uh, that's how the the pipeline visualization would, would look like when when you have that. So uh, each stage will have will get its own uh, uh, will get its own uh, column and will get uh, its own uh, uh, box basically on, on, on this visualization. So it looks very much like uh, build flow plugin uh, visualization, but you know it feels a bit more modern in that than in that case. Uh, and for that purpose, for the for, for, to support uh, this kind of uh, uh, job types, new job types, are called pi pipelines. Uh, they 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 defined this uh, pipeline, a new pipeline job type, which basically is capable of taking Jenkins file from different locations um, uh, and execute it and visualize it in, in, in on, on, on Jen Jenkins interface. Uh, also, another concept that was introduced a few years ago and evolved eventually uh, to be useful with, with the pipelines is the concept of folders and. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the multi-branch pipeline uh, is something that is uh, uh, Jen uh, Jenkins is trying to implement for for open source flows, where you have, uh, or if, if it could be also for, for enterprises, of course, uh, when you have uh, one master branch and maybe several uh, uh, feature branches and a lot of pull requests coming in. So basically, for every uh, for every branch, uh, you, you would actually execute a, some sort of pipeline and. Uh, some common configuration uh, uh, could be shared on the folder level, uh, and the, the, the sub pipelines uh, will actually use, use that as a, as a basis. Uh, when you create a new pipeline job or multi 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 branch pipe, uh, pipeline job, you have an ability to say that from where the Jenkins file is coming from, and uh, you can configure it right away inside the, the job definition itself, and it will end up inside the XML file and on Jenkins server eventually, or you can. Uh, Pull it from the same repository uh, where your code is. So th this is the, the like the biggest change, I would say. Now you can instead of you know keeping the whole configuration of your Jenkins job on the Jenkins server, you can actually keep the uh, the, the definition of how you build your code, how you deploy your code uh, inside uh, the, the the version control where your application code is. This is very similar to what, for example, Travis does, or uh, so some other CI server does, where the definition of the of the, of the build of the, of the stages that you need to perform with your code actually lives together with the code. Uh, and and this, this is a huge step, uh, step forward for Jenkins, uh, because basically, uh, well, if you if you look at Jenkins installations back in the days. A lot of configuration was coming into into, into those jobs, and uh, the, the way I uh, did, did they, like externalized the configuration, I was using the Gradle plugin and Job DSL. Uh, but I've seen a lot of situations where people were not really externalizing that in any help. They were just keeping the whole config uh, on, on on Jenkins server, editing it manually, uh, and uh, of course, losing Jenkins server was 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 kind of a disaster for for, for this kind of setups. And now now we kind of externalize most of the things that compose the build pipeline into a separate into a external file that is stored together with the code. So Jenkins server may die, uh, 
may, we may change, we, 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 we might migrate the code to a different Jenkins server, but still the Jenkins file will be preserved, and uh, it makes the whole architecture a bit more maintainable in, 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 the, in that way. Uh, still, there are like, uh, but when, I, when I started with, with, with Jenkins, I was starting using that. Well, I, I, re I really liked visualizations, and uh, uh, the thing is that they shared those visualizations early enough. I think I, th I think it was 2016, very early 2016, where they shared this nice uh, pipeline view, and, then, and that's what that's what got people hooked up, and uh, they started using the the, the Jenkins file. Uh, but then. Uh, when I tried to dive, to dive deeper, I realized uh, they don't use job DSL. Job DSL was very well supported. Uh, uh, the DSL language supporting different types of plugins that exist in the ecosystem, uh, and you have no way to use job DSL inside Jenkins file. It's it's a different language actually. It's a different uh, type of integration. Uh, they didn't. Well, they kind of replaced build flow. They didn't really extend it, so we can deprecated that, uh, which maybe again is, is a bit of strange move, but, uh, but well, probably it's for the good, for the future. And it took them quite, quite, long, quite, 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 quite a long time, so they're still, still, still improving that. Uh, also, integration with the, because of not using JobDSL, because of, uh, uh, they actually created a new language, basically, a new, new DSL language, uh, there was no integration with, with many of the exi existing plugins. And as, as, as you probably know, for, for many organizations, which they, they rely on, on different sort of Jenkins plugins to actually run their pipelines. They, they depend on the functionality. When suddenly you have to rewrite uh, stuff, that maybe not, uh, is not good for the, for the company and for, 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 the, for the investment you made before in, 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 into Jenkins infrastructure. So a lot of questions for, from my side and a lot of questions from, not, uh, for, for, from the community. Uh, I'm, and Honestly, I think now, now I would say that it's, it actually makes sense to, to get away from that because uh, oh, 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 Jenkins has gathered, uh, has gathered a lot of uh, legacy uh, and uh, some of the design decisions that were made like in 2006, 2007 maybe are not relevant anymore. So actually having a fresh start and having something that is isolated from, uh, what, from, from the legacy code, actually maybe it was not that bad decision because now we have more or less fresh uh, uh, fresh attitude, fresh, 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 uh, fresh entry in, 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 into new code. Uh, also, the problems that you, pr you would probably face if you started using Jenkins file and uh, Jen Jenkins pipeline in 2016, there was no good documentation. Now it's improving, but still it's, I, I would say it's not super good. Uh, also, now there are more examples available, but back in 2016, people were just starting using it. Uh, and uh, any Google searches would give you not, not much, no, not, nothing else. And of course, uh, for people who, were, who, are, who know how to read Jenkins source code, or who know, who know how to read Groovy, uh, that was definitely easier. But uh, for, I, I really I see, I see that uh, people with less programming experience, they were definitely suffering from you know, understanding what's happening in the Jenkins file. Uh, yeah, user interface was also a bit, a bit puzzling in the beginning. Uh, and uh, the DSL itself was a bit unstable and was missing and uh, functionality and you, yeah, you had to go through the source code actually to understand what is going on. And lack of plugins and integration was very frustrating in the beginning. Uh, well, it's improving. It's improving definitely. Uh, and I think, well, CloudBees has no, no choice now. They, they have to go that path. They have to, con to finish their work. Uh, and uh, the recommendation looks a bit better now. At least it has some good, good entry examples, uh, introduction examples, which, which you can take and use Im immediately. Also, they added this uh, snippet generator. So it, it, when you are inside, uh, when you're editing your job, you can actually find this pipeline syntax link. It's also available in, in the, the left, left bar, left menu bar, uh, which will uh, lead you to this snippet generator uh, interface. Where basically in this uh, in, in 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 the Dropbox, uh, you don't see that. It's very yeah okay. Yeah, in in in, in this Dropbox, basically you, you you can select what kind of steps are available, and depending on number of plugins you have in your Jenkins installation, it will show different types of uh, steps that are available. And, and and now basically if if your plugin if you, if you need some plugin to support pipeline uh, DSL, you had to extend it to, to, to actually support it. So, so many plugins actually have adopted to that, but not, 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 not all of them. 
Uh, and uh, this will uh, give you a list of all the possible steps that you could add into, in, into the stage code, uh, and will give you the, the, the parameters that those uh, steps take. So it's a bit easier. So uh, actually, I can try to show you that. I have it here. So I can go to pipeline syntax, and I can select. I can see all 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 the possible steps that that could, 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 that exist in in my Jenkins installation. So I can try to let's say do gunit, and it it helps me with the parameters. So it gives some explanation there, and and and, and then I can say that generate pi pipeline snippet. Okay, that's this was pretty silly snippet, uh, and I can try let's say two percent, and then. Uh, XML and I'll generate pipeline snippet. It will give me a. Okay, maybe this one was. Oh, okay, see, it's not not ideal. Uh, so I, I can. I mean, you, you mean most of the case, actually, could take take this snippet and insert in my my pipeline code to directly. So this is this, this is a bit of a helper. Uh, without that, it would be it would be a bit harder. Uh, uh, to, 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 to do that, but also documentation now is, 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 a bit, is, is a bit better. So I will show you some some DSL examples that I uh, use myself uh, till till this point. Uh, some of them I, I so some of them are coming from documentation. Some of them I actually created myself. So for example, uh, it may come uh, it may be uh, not not that obvious, but when you run a pipeline inside inside uh, workspace, Jenkins has. Uh, you actually may not be allowed to write files directly, so you have, do not have access to the uh, to the to the uh, file system directly. You have to do it through through what Jenkins DSL provides. In this case, it has write file and read file, so you can actually read that. Uh, and also, the path uh, to, to to the workspace could not be obvious. Uh, so it's kind of abstracted away from from workspace definition. Uh, another thing that I use it quite often and, uh, at this point is that uh, because it's you know it's groovy code, uh, I can actually do normal groovy Java exception handling. Uh, and this is how I uh, actually, I had to, uh, if I have to do something on build failure, for example, I have to do this kind of lock. So uh, uh, I have to catch an exception that could happen inside the, uh, in, in, inside the stages, and I have to throw it again after that, but in finally block I will do some post-processing, something like sending a Slack message, sending email. Uh, it, it, if you use like a normal, normal freestyle, freestyle Jenkins job, it's not that obvious. Actually, there you just configure that, and it handles that behind the scenes for you. Inside the pipeline DSL, you have to actually be quite explicit there, so you have to catch exceptions and do some stuff. If, uh, if 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 it fails, and that's what uh, like uh, the code that you can actually put inside uh, uh, inside uh, finally block. Well, you see, it's very complex code. That's why it doesn't fit the screen. Uh, but basically, what it does in the end is it sends a Slack message to to a channel, uh, whether the build is failing or the build is uh, 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 the build is uh, succeeding. Uh, and we, uh, here we just calculate the the. Uh, the the URL the color of 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 of, of the message and uh, all of that is coming inside inside the pipeline uh, message. Uh, uh, another thing you can do uh, is that uh, actually should I yeah yeah I we jumped a bit so uh, and, and another thing you can do is uh, like like. Uh, so, so some of these things, some of these DSL DSL entries, actually coming from normal normal plugins that actually existed in freestyle jobs as well. Uh, and for example, archiving the artifacts. So if if you need to package some of the part and uh, some of the part of your build and attach it to 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 to, to the build information, you can do it with our archive archives, uh, our archive artifacts. And this uh, zip will be it will zip all the required resources and attach it to the to to to, to the to the to the build. Uh, also, uh, because it's groovy, we, 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 we can use closures and uh, do something within the context of the closure. Uh, so, for example, in this case, we do a dir uh, closure to change the, term, the current directory we're working in, and all the commands that are executed inside that will actually be with, with, within the directory. The, the current directory for them will be TMP, and you can do as, as, as many nested as you want. Uh, the, th the same thing you can do with environment variables, so you can uh, wrap, uh, do, do, uh, do several command executions inside inside uh, environment, uh, block and pass common environment variables. Uh, uh, another thing that you may need to use, uh, and actually I need I needed to use it to, for a couple of to a couple of builds, uh, is uh, called stashing. Uh, basically, it's it's a way, especially if you have like uh, several uh, multiple agents, multiple slaves that are running your build, and your 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 job basically is jumping from one. Uh, node to another, you may need to stash 
like to save, it's, it's very similar to how, how git stash works. I mean, you need to save some, some files in, into a stash that you're going to use later on. And for that, you can use stash and unstash. Uh, and then just uh, the, the name of the stash will be like for your know, first stash. And then when you need those files to be available to the next stage, uh, which may run on a different agent uh, and a different server, uh, then you can unstash that and then you know, Jenkins will give you, give you access to that. So it's kind of a way to share uh, results between stages. Uh, yeah, and uh, the Jenkins DSL also, the Jen Jenkins Files DSL also supports, supports some, some uh, build wrappers. Uh, one of them is timestamps, and it has special name, uh, sp a special DSL entry called timestamps. So basically every, uh, every command uh, within, uh, within, within, within this, uh, every log line that was, is outputted in, inside this log will get a timestamp in front of it. Uh, uh, which sometimes may make it easy you know, to, to see the timing and the, the, to debug something, like some low, low, low long stages. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, another thing that actually I had to do, because otherwise it was not really uh, uh, picking up the, uh, uh, the junior reports. So uh, uh, if you run your tests within, 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 within using Gradle, for example, and, that, and the tests fail, so if you don't have this try finally block, then uh, GUnit report uh, uh, will not be published. So you will, you will get a failing build, but zero uh, data inside inside uh, inside the inside the report, and that that's annoying. Uh, I had to do this uh, in order to uh, actually publish report uh, publish even partial reports into in, in, into Jenkins view, uh, which was very handy. And uh, this kind of things you, ha you will have to uh, do sometimes with Jenkins file because otherwise, uh, so, so some of the things that you, may, may, you would used to, you know, with the, with the build, post build actions and build action, build steps inside uh, normal freestyle build, you have to be a bit more uh, verbose here because uh, the flow is, is basically the code that, that, that has to be checked very well. Uh, another thing I had to do once, uh, uh, because we needed to do some logic depending on what kind of changes are there uh, in, 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 inside, the, inside the change set coming from, from a git commit. For, uh, for example, if git commit contains a message that uh, please do not build, so something like very utility methods, utility commits from, from coming from admins or something, we didn't want to build that stuff. And uh, you, you have this API. Basically, the current build provides you a normal Jenkins build uh, API, which actually is available also in, in, in normal Jenkins, but usually it's used by the plugins. Here you have full access to that. You actually have access to, to other components uh, of, of, of the current build. And here we can just say, how, how, what's changed? We can print it. We can, we can do some logic around that. So again, it's more verbose in terms of uh, um, you know, uh, how much code you need, but also it gives you some possibilities here, so you can make smarter uh, decisions inside your pipeline, depending on what kind of commits are there, do some st stages, or don't, do not run some stages. Uh, and uh, in, in, if you had like a freestyle job, you would have to implement it with a plugin, uh, and there is a plugin for that, but it's not really reliable, so yeah, this, is what, this was the solution for us at that point. Uh, yeah, that's what I described already uh, about the control flows, and controlling exceptions. Uh, if you really need to do something when the build is failing, this is the way to do that. This is the way to send a Slack message to, to the channel. I can actually show how it looks like. In this particular case, I have it. Yeah, I have Slack here. And let's see if I can see that quickly. Yeah, there's basically messages sent by, the, by that code. Which we're getting uh, status, we're getting the link to the build, and we, we're getting the color so we, we can see that everything is funny. funny. And uh, honestly, uh, now I try to avoid uh, using mail uh, too much, email to, to send notifications about builds. I'm using, I'm using chat for that because it's much more uh, actionable. Uh, uh, another thing that what you saw already with timestamps is kind of re build wrapper, something that is, is actually is a common uh, abstraction in, in, in Jenkins in, in general. You can add several build wrappers like timestamp, uh, timestamp uh, unsee coloring, and uh, similar stuff. Uh, and in, in case of unsee color, actually there is a DSL entry now. You, you can actually just use unsee color uh, method and then the closure pass the closure to that. Uh, but if you have some generic build wrapper that is not yet part of the DSL, you can actually do it like that. You do wrap and then specify the class that is the Jenkins implementation of, of build wrapper. Uh, and uh, that's, that's another thing that I find quite fascinating, that if you use ANSI colors, uh, especially for, 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 for output, like from, from Gradle, from
from, from an Ansible puppet, uh, from some other tools that actually support ANSI coloring, uh, it's much easier to read uh, the, the output log than if you, if you have it with ANSI colors uh, disabled. Uh, so, and I also try to use it, uh, Dancy Coloring, for, for, for builds that, for, for, for outputs that uh, are coming for, for, for my own build, so it's easier for me to, to follow up on that. Uh, and also, of course, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins in, in, is, is integrating uh, with Docker pretty well, there's a Docker plugin, and Docker plugin for Jenkins adds additional uh, functionality into, into Jenkins file DSL, and you can use it like that, for example, if you want to use, some, uh, if you don't want to install Maven on, on Jenkins, which is uh, usually people do, but uh, if, if you don't want to do that, uh, you can actually just uh, grab an image from, from Docker Hub and run your build inside that uh, inside the Docker inside the Docker image, inside the Docker container. Uh, and you can do it like that. So again, we, we uh, Jenkins file is quite advanced in what, what, what it allows you to do because it gives you some some context and you can organize that code uh, as, 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 as in, in the way you want it. Uh, and uh, of course, you depend on some plugins, but again, it's more uh, it's more uh, transparent in, in, in what it does eventually. May require some additional coding, but uh, it's more transparent. Uh, another thing you can do with with the Jenkins DSL, uh, Jenkins file DSL, is that you can run something in parallel, especially if you have you know some some tests that you want to run in parallel and some 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 something that actually doesn't need to be happen sequentially. Uh, you can actually do that with this uh, s uh, small DSL and. Uh, Actually, some, some of this could actually be visualized a bit better. It will not be visualized in, in, in the standard uh, Jenkins UI at the moment, but it will visualize in the blue ocean, which I will show you in, 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 in a second. Uh, yeah, another thing, well, we have some flaky tasks. You can actually do retry of, of, uh, of tests and run them again. Uh, we know that flaky tests are bad, but uh, well, sometimes we have to do that. Uh, one thing that... Uh, when you actually try to write uh, some, some, some real groovy code, because uh, most of the things that we, we have, I showed you here actually, they are uh, method calls to DSL, so they, we, we don't really call real groovy code. And one thing you can actually, uh, f f th the thing you can actually face is that the code that is inside, uh, that uh, is executed inside uh, uh, Jenkins file is not, uh, it's kind of sandboxed, it's not really executed immediately. Because what the Jenkins does in the first place, it uh, takes the Jenkins file, parses it, collects the call, all, all, all the code blocks in, 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 into the post-execution uh, phase, uh, and then and, and it, it may execute them later on. And so, some of the things may not be as expected. So it could be problems with, with the accessing the file system, could be problems accessing the, uh, so, so some classes which are not there. Uh, uh, but in general, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if, you, if you avoid using two, two custom, uh, custom code, then it's going to be... Uh, go, uh, rather fine. So, uh, yeah. And some of the plugins, as, as I mentioned, they're not really exposing any, any, any ready-made functionality uh, for, for Jenkins. Uh, uh, some of the old plugins uh, that, that I, I, I tend to use before, uh, they, and you have to do some work around there, or you have to re-implement stuff, or do some, some, something. Uh, another good feature that was introduced some time ago, uh, I think uh, mid-2016, mid you can actually also do you create your own pipeline libraries, and your pipeline libraries could uh, reside in your in your own repositories, uh, Git repositories, and they can, can come from from there. From there. So uh, if you would like to define a, a new library uh, that defines your common steps of doing things, like you know, if you have a certain way to do tests, if you do a certain way to do compilation, you can define uh, a set of uh, tasks with the help of Groovy or Java, and uh, this is a normal library structure you can put inside some repository uh, in, your, in your Git uh, server. Uh, and uh, then you can also apply that library on, on a global level, folder level, or on Jenkins file level. Uh, and the functionality will be available inside the Jenkins file. So you can kind of make a reusable steps there. So for example, uh, if you define a library uh, on, on so let's say, on a folder level a, or a global level, uh, then you can, uh, you, you have to use this uh, library, uh, some which is going to be a reference to the name you defined in Jenkins configuration, and then you can use code from that library to execute something. So in, in this particular case, it's using some, some sort of helper. Uh, if your library is located, if you don't want to, you know, to configure Jenkins, which, which, which actually is quite natural, I don't want to spend a lot of time configuring the CI server. I actually would like to just configure my pipeline, which is m more important to me than the Jenkins server itself. So you can actually do that with, with the, you can put your uh, code, uh, library code into to, to GitHub, for example, and you can directly import that from there. 
Uh, and for example, there's a qu quite uh, uh, advanced library for, for from Fabric Fabricate uh, uh, platform, which uh, provides some some common uh, some common uh, functionality for uh, deploying to dropping uh, for uh, floating projects to Kubernetes to, to Docker and to other stuff, and has built pre-built pre pre steps like a Kubernetes apply, and uh, for example, yeah, some other like Maven can release so. Uh, additional stuff that is integrating that into the platform of, of Fabricate, uh, but also give, giving some functionality, some some common stuff that you can reuse in, in your projects as well. And uh, as you can see, this project is actually it's, it has the same uh, exactly the same structure as I showed you on on, on, on the on the first slides. Is that we have this uh, 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 this is the the pipeline steps, the the code for the pipeline steps that we can reuse. And if you go inside, we'll actually see that it's. Uh, uh, it defines uh, certain certain commands, for example, git tag. What was maybe Kubernetes? Kubernetes. Okay, it's not there. I think it was here. Yeah, okay, it's not Kubernetes. Yeah, I'm better typing. Okay, no, never mind. Uh, but basically, you, you, you can also define uh, different variables that are available into inside. I think it's here, actually. Yeah, it's here. You're right. Uh, so, for example, not here. Yeah, you basically inject some code and in, 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 into, into the Jenkins file that you can use later on, and uh, some of them are like port template, for example, is available. Uh, okay. So, and uh, the thing is that if we look at Jenkins UI at this point, uh, this is how this is how Jenkins looks now, and this is how the uh, build pipeline uh, is lo it looks now. So it's still the old interface, and uh, what Cloudbees and Jenkins are actually aiming at. Uh, they're aiming at re replacing the full UI, UI and UX experience for Jenkins. So they're actually working already for uh, for a lot of time, for a long time, on a uh, secret project called Blue Ocean, which actually is not that secret anymore. Uh, they released version 1.0 in, uh, I think it was March, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, this year, of course, uh, and uh, this is basically a replacement of, of the UI, but uh, it's it's also coming as a plugin uh, to the existing Jenkins installation. So basically, uh, uh, if you you can install it, and it will not break the the, the, the old UI, and still you would, you would have to use old UI for uh, for um, uh, different configurations because Blue, Blue Ocean is not implementing everything yet. It will eventually, but not yet. Uh, and uh, if you install the plugin, then uh, it will appear here as a, as a, as a, as a button, uh, which you can switch to uh, if you want to use Blue Ocean UI instead of uh, classical UI. And if I if you, if you go there, then uh, now this is uh, well, it looks a bit more modern, right? Uh, we have uh, more um, we have more uh, better colors. And for example, the the, the uh, when you click the build on, on, onto the builds, we can see that it's uh, the, the green one is green one, and if I if I if I check the the red one, then we we'll see immediately it's a red one. So it's definitely nicer than the old UI. It definitely uh, looks better and more modern. Uh, the problem, for example, I have with uh, but but the thing is, some of the plugins actually do not work as as, as you you would expect. Uh, if if I go to the old UI, and I will check, let's say, this is the old UI, I can. Uh, okay, I don't see the tests. Let me check this one. Ooh, API staging. So, so we see we have we see the test results. Something that is quite common for Jenkins. We publish test results uh, for our project. If I go to Blue Ocean and I will try to find my test results uh, on 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 the build. Actually, it says there are no tests to cache for, 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 for this run, which is quite surprising. And this is, uh, I think it was a bug. I think actually it was fixed in some very latest versions of, of, of Jenkins. 
but uh, some of the some of the rough edges actually are still there. So the UI definitely looks nicer, uh, but uh, you probably you'll probably miss some things uh, that that you probably expect. And also, this is the artifacts are missing, uh, even though they they do exist on on, on the original UI, and so, so sometimes they, they they are shown. Okay, in this case, I see the the, the artifact, uh, and no test still. Um, so uh, some some rough edges, but uh, as you can see, you can uh, click on the stages, and UI is a bit yeah more uh, navigable than 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 the, the old Jenkins UI, where you have everything in one place, uh, and uh, you, you you can find the log the log for every stage you execute for every step you execute, uh, and for example, in this case, we, in case of build, we have two. Uh, in case of build stage, we have two um, uh, steps is executed, one and two of them are shell scripts, and one of them, as you see, is uh, getting giving permissions to Gradle V, and the one is actually Gradle V. Uh, so it's much more nav navigable in that sense. We, we can go into specific steps and uh, get, get information. Uh, and uh, it's actually quite active now, so pe people are contributing to Blue Ocean quite a lot. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the dashboard I showed you. This is the way you look at uh, specific uh, pipeline. So then they're, they're not calling them builds anymore. They call or jobs anymore. They're calling them pipelines. Uh, and uh, you would not see uh, freestyle pipeline jobs in this UI. You will only see the pipeline uh, jobs that are uh, uh, that are called pipelines. So it's all, only that type will be visible. Uh, and you can also uh, well, one thing that actually they are aiming at. Uh, and uh, which I tried, it, it works okay. Uh, uh, you actually create, you can use a visual uh, uh, editor to actually create pipeline yourself. Uh, so, and uh, for example, I can go, you know, click uh, plus, and uh, I actually can try uh, try to show it if it's gonna work. New pipeline. Now, okay. I, I tried it. Yeah, th this is a slightly older version. Let me try this one. Uh, let me try this one. Okay, it's, it's very slow. Uh, but anyway, uh, in, in, in the very recent versions of Blue Ocean, they actually added this editor where you can uh, visually define your steps. And what will actually happen behind the scenes is that it will generate the Jenkins file for you. Uh, and, if, uh, and if the Jenkins file was coming from uh, from the Git repository itself, it will actually do a commit and push to the Git repository. So it's kind of, uh, well, you save the configuration of your big pipeline immediately into the version control and, uh, and, and it stores there. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, this is, uh, okay, I'm kind of more or less finished. Uh, so uh, I would say that Jenkins is still a friend for me because I, 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 I'm still using it quite a lot for different projects and I'm still using the old UI a lot. Uh, and Jenkins is definitely evolving and changing and uh, what the thing they, they do in, uh, in, um, uh, in, in, in Blue Ocean and Pipeline plugin is definitely a good uh, effort. Uh, the only probably complaint that's probably happening a bit too slow, but it's definitely a good effort and definitely it's worth it because the whole ecosystem needed some some re refresh and rewrite, uh, but it will definitely take some time. So I would say at this point uh, it's probably a bit early to use uh, fully all, all the features of Blue Ocean. Uh, it's probably okay already to use uh, the pipeline itself because it's stabilizing the, the language itself is stabilizing the plugins. The plugin ecosystem is uh, catching up. Uh, yeah, I just need to be patient uh, and uh, probably still have some some time. Yeah, there is some docu documentation on that, and uh, yeah, that's that's. I think that's all from me. Uh, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to to answer. Okay, no questions. Well, thank you then. <laughs>